that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Music, medicine, then some. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. The song's over. Here we go. And welcome to Talk of the Tavern, everybody. What what did we walk into that our not so studio audience is just yelling boobies? And just to be clear, it's not even the guys; it's the ladies yelling boobies. Cool. We've heard, we're going to need an opening toast about boobies, and maybe actually do a closing toast this episode too. That yeah. might be good. That might be good. So. I'm Travis Sivart, author of a sci-fi extraordinaire such as Silver and Smith series, a cyberpunk, cyberpulp, kind of a Indiana Jones meets Blade Runner. Check that shit out. My advice tonight is another bottle of the Red Vixen, Red Irish Ale, sent to me by Michael from the Roanoke area of Virginia. Thank you very much. I am loving this. It is a Virginia-made beer, and I do love my Irish Reds. What about you, Ed? My advice tonight is ginger ale given to me by my sister. Uh, yeah. How about you, Andrea? Um, so, tonight I'm going to try this European soda, blood orange. Uh, let's say given to me by me because I'm worth it. Very good. Very good. And then our special sitting guest, Aiden, what do you got over there? Tonight I am sipping on a healthy helping of East Coast fresh American air. And what's that in your hand? Be careful. It's a butterfly training knife. Basically just teaches me how to flip things around very fancily so people get impressed easy. So why is it a training knife? Does it have like little wheels on it? Um, No, it just doesn't have a sharp edge. Oh, okay. So you okay. don't actually cut yourself while you're learning. So that's another vice for you tonight then, right? Yeah. Okay. Brutally you, assaulting my knuckles with metal. You know, playing pocket pool helps you to fl- learn how to flip things around too. Hmm. Here, here. <laughs> Hold on, let me f- top off the beer. And Maria says my vice is water and trying to convince a cat that she's not angry at me for moving her. It's not going well. Never works out. So, let's uh, raise a glass to boobies, moving cats, and uh, flipping things around that go in your pocket. Here, here. Here's. It's the lamest clean ever. It's a very angry sounding bottle. It is. Now, by the time this episode airs, this will have been gone. But when we're recording this, just recently, we lost Queen Elizabeth. So, you know, uh, hearts and thoughts going out to all those affected by that, uh, physically, financially, emotionally, or whatever. She was truly an icon Mm. of almost a century and a ruler of part of the Western world for nearly three quarters of a century. So definitely influenced a lot of things, whether she meant to or not. Uh, Figured I'd do that. And now, tonight's topic. uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I should tell the preface and why we go into this, or give the topic then go into it i'll give the topic first describing race in literature representation or racism now i'll give the background to this okay i in the end of august did a week-long webinar stream of pro writing aids uh, sci-fi week webinar it was great 
there was one topic on there where a gentleman is talking about good description in sci-fi. Now, this gentleman going to describe the race, guys, because it's pertinent to the story, at least for comedic value. Very nice guy. Very well-spoken, but a little nervous, a little skinny, very pale white guy with a shaved head. And on his PowerPoint presentation, he has, you know, atmosphere, politics, blah, blah, blah. How not to describe skin color. And he goes into, basically, there are certain words we don't use anymore because it's it's not politically correct. It is offensive, uh, especially things that lean towards food, such as uh, mocha, caramel, um, olive, and so on. And there's other things. But, well, and, and you can voice when, when, we, when I get done giving the little intro here, you jump on that if you want, buddy. But anyhow, because this was something we talked about here in the tavern, but not in the pro writing aid chat. And I'll touch on that stuff too. But the chat on the official site wouldn't stop haranguing this man. You told us what not to do. Why don't you tell us how to do it? Then the chat started pointing out that if you mention race when describing your main characters, you are potentially racist because now you have made it an issue as the writer. And then they went a little bit further and said, and if you don't mention race and your readers automatically assume that your main characters are white, straight, uh, cisgender, that is the writer's fault. So, the other side of this is representation. Representation fucking matters. When we finally got the Wonder Woman movie, a female superhero, Greek by the way, still white-ish, but Black Panther. Ed and I talked long and hard about that here on the Tavern many times. Representation is important. We've got Miss Marvel that just came out. We have Latino superheroes. And in our sci-fi and fantasy, we need more than just white people. So I'm going to sit back and let you guys go through this a little bit before I jump back in. Describing race in literature. Is it representation or racism? And how do you do it. And then I'll talk about it from a writer's point of view when I get my turn. Who wants to start? Ed, you want to rant a little? Go, Red. Go, Red. That's ranting First Ed. All, He's Red. I, I, I think this dude is a little fucking whack, okay? How can you have mixed representation in your story if you don't describe what the people are? To and, clarify... And yes, he avoided talking about it. That's basically what rolled out from the chat. Just so you know, it wasn't him that says, don't describe it all. That's what chat was okay. pulling out of the stuff he was avoiding saying. Go okay. on. Okay. All right. All right. Gotcha. 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 And you're absolutely correct. As we talked about before, long ago in the tavern. Um, yeah. Growing up as a kid, Black Panther, when I saw him in a comic book, hey, here's a superhero that looks like me got me more interested in the comic book. So I think it is, it is a little bit, it is very important to represent whatever, black, white, gay, Chinese, uh, whatever, I'm, I'm gonna call somebody something that I shouldn't call them, so whatever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> in your story, Caramel, please call me Caramel, okay? That shit turns me on when a white woman calls me Caramel. Call me Caramel, damn it. I don't mind one bit. And Andrew, you know he's pronounced it like all three ways you could pronounce it, just so everybody knows what the <laughs> fuck he means. I want everybody to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ed. Go on. Go on. Go on. Somebody else can talk for a while. Aiden, got a little thought on this one? <sighs> so, as a man from the generation of snowflakes, I think... 
people are getting too sensitive about just describing a fucking character. Like, if I go out, say, my car is black, and I'm like, bro, I just bought this brand new black Lexus. Someone's going to get offended that I called my Lexus black. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, you know, describing a certain person as whatever race they are is offensive personally. But like if once you start stereotyping that race, once you start, you know, right. And Ed and I are both pointing at the camera. Yes. Go on. But just, and caramel, olive, mocha, shut the fuck up. Now, seriously, just let me do this real quick. I'm going to play the other side on this one. And Aiden, I think once I say this, I think you'll probably agree with me. You're a white dude. You don't get to make the choice if those words are okay. Ed, you're black. You do. Uh, uh, it's true. Me, please. Like, no. Any thoughts, Andrew? It's a description. You, I, I don't even know. I like detail in my stories. Give me detail. Here's what I'll tell you from a writer point of view, and I've seen this shift drastically over the past decade or so. And in chat, matter of fact, Maria has said, as a reader, I would love to have more diverse characters in books. As a writer, I avoid mentioning race as a whole because it's fucking scary to do it wrong. That being said, I have a woman of color in my book, but don't describe her. Merely give her an oriental name. Um... Maria is a writer. You can check out her writing. Um, Maria can put a link in the chat. Bree is working on her first full-length novel. Says, I've mostly, I, I agree with you, Maria. I've mostly stuck with white characters because that's my culture and what I know. Um, and let's see here. Maria adds, okay, here's the thing, though. If you're a white author and you're describing a person of color characters, are you also describing the color of your white characters or just assuming? That's a great clarification. If you're describing everybody except for the white people, well, okay, maybe. But from a writer's point of view, there is there are a lot of writers that are afraid to write somebody of a racial or ethnic or even gender identity different from their Oh, because there has been explosive criticism against this. So, here's what I'll tell you. As a general rule, you put anybody you want in your book. You put a black person, Asian, gay, straight, whatever you want. Do a little sensitivity research. Be reasonable about it. Appreciate the social culture that's out there just because you want to keep readers. But you write what you want. Here's what I will suggest now. Do not write the struggles, the integral ethnic story of a character of a different race from you. I feel like that's a safe zone. You can have black people, Asian uh trans, whatever characters in your story, but when you're writing that personal struggle of what they're going through because of that part of their history, background, ethnic group, identity, whatever, that's when you tread into dangerous waters. Ed, I see you leaning back. You got your chin up. What are you doing? What, why? Why, why, do you, why do you feel that way? Why do you think that way? Now, I don't. I'm recommending okay. what I've seen in culture, but here's what I'll tell you what they say. I don't know the black man struggle, Ed. I can't just watch and learn throughout my life and through empathy and intellect, write a reasonable story about that struggle. And even if I could, I don't have the right to. That's not my story to tell. It's called research. 
I can write about elves, I can write about dwarves, I can write about alien species, because they're fictional, I cannot. Well, I can write about, you know, other groups besides my own, but uh, yeah, you run the I, risk I, of... I understand what you're saying to, yeah. to a, a certain extent. I'm, I remember reading a book from an author, and I think I even spoke of this on a show once. Uh, his name was Howard Griffin mm-hmm. back in the 60s. He wanted to write about inner city life of blacks in the ghetto. He went into the ghetto to interview people to write his story. Nobody would talk to him. Okay. So he went through a series of taking medications and laying under the heat lamp to actually turn his skin color dark to pass off as a black person and went and lived in the inner city so he could write a story. Very good book. It was it was called Black Like Me. I suggest reading if you want to read about the inner city in the 60s. Um, very good book. So I guess in a way I understand what you're saying, but if you're an author you are a researcher yes you don't know how and an I empathizer feel. you don't know how i may feel but you can write about that struggle because it's there in the history books and it's there when i talk to you or so many of my other friends i can and i have we've talked about this before i will ask you hey what kind of shit do you deal with now? Did you deal with 20 years ago? You know, what did your parents go through? I ask these questions because I'm genuinely, I'm, I'm fucking curious. By the way, Maria says, jumping in on that, Travis, though, as a LGBT plus person, I'm so sick of having every LGBT plus book have their characters go through the struggle of coming out. I feel like People of color readers feel the same about making every book about their stereotypical struggles as well. Um, And yeah, I agree with that. Here's what I'm going to tell you. With superhero movies, I'm tired of origin stories. Especially when you've heard that origin story many times. Mm -hmm. If you were going to write a very personal story about an individual's journey coming out, person of color struggle, etc. That's great. But you need to make that unique enough and not just a retelling of the same thing, but you're standing on stage left instead of stage right. But on the other hand, one thing I've received very positive feedback about are my characters of color, my female characters, um, etc. gender identity, because I, I'm writing a character and they have this background, this attribute, this skin color, this identity, but that's not the story end. They're still a human being and I'm telling a story about a human, not a story about a black man a trans woman, etc. And this, in my opinion, gives a great value because now you have that diversity without plucking at all these other things we're talking about. Mm. And Maria says, yeah, sensitivity readers are so important if you don't have the ability to walk in the shoes of the ethnicity you're writing. Uh, Here's what I'll tell you. Sensitivity writers scare the hell out of me. Because it just feels like you're handing somebody a key to your car and they could just, like, wreck your car for you. In other words, you're going, hey, why don't you just tell me what I have to take out of my book and what parts of my story I have to rip out. Right. Look, we're not all George R. R. Martin. We're not all Stephen King. But they can sit here and write a book with Strong racism in it, Stephen King, quite a few of his books. Uh, George R. R. Martin with just different things that trigger people. And they do fine. So what else I'm telling you is you can write. You could be the white guy that writes the black man struggle or whatever. That's fine. You may get blowback by it for it. 
but that might also sell one more book or a million more yeah, books. True. Or it might get you blacklisted and nobody buys your book at all. You don't know. So how do we do this with representation instead of racism then? Because if you keep on pointing it, he's black, she's Asian. Now you're racist. Your main character's point of view that are looking at these people, they're making race an issue by realizing there's a race in the head, in, in their head, in that character's head. And to me, uh, the taboo of using descriptive terms such as caramel, mocha, or whatever, what have you, to me, that's why it's so important to use those type of terms because you are saying something other than they're black, they're right. Asian, they're whatever. I mentioned this to someone else and mm -hmm. I, they said, you know what? But if you're close or intimate with that person, it's different. And I'm like, so in a romance, using this between two lovers might be very appropriate. You know, because, Ed, you and I discussed this a year or two ago when I first started going, oh, this mm -hmm. is a thing. And I spoke mm -hmm. to Ed, just so the, the listening audience knows, Ed is in his 50s. I worked with four or five black women over the age of 40 and a couple younger. And I went to them and presented this. What do you guys think? Every single one went, no, I'm good with it. I like it. One of them was very passionate going, my man calls me, and it was caramel in particular, and it makes me hot. This was like a 57-year-old woman. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it depends how you use it, where you use it. And you're always going to piss someone off and so on. Yeah. Don't Couple, please everybody. No, no, it's, uh, you'll chafe. Just saying. Um, Maria says, when is the white person writing a non-white character too much? Is it when putting in a racist struggle? Is it mentioning skin tone? Is it putting an accent in? Where's the line? Bree says, how do you use it and where you use it? That's what she said. Oh, my God. Thanks for contributing to the conversation. <clears throat> Maria, the line is in each individual reader's head. Some readers right away are going to be triggered and go, this is horrible. Others will go through the whole book and not even realize you mentioned race. So which one... Mm -hmm is racist in that case the one that doesn't see anything the one who wrote the book or the one who was triggered immediately the one that's triggered immediately you know where i stand on that andrea i i have no words <laughs> aiden you got any thoughts on this and i'll wrap this up guys i plead the fifth oh come now honestly I'm with that on this one. The person interpreting it as racist either is overly sensitive about everything and won't make it anywhere in this world, or they have racist thoughts of their own. Well, and that's why they immediately went there like that. Here's what I'll tell you guys. Right when we need to run right, be reasonable, be empathetic, be sympathetic, be sensitive but write your stories and represent as much as you can. Here's to sharing your cultures, however you can. To culture. <laughs>